Bismillah, Assalamualaikum Warahmatullah. You're listening to Microbiology Lesson on Introduction to Immunology. We have gone through the first two lines of defense, which uh, constitutes the innate immune system. Now we're going to go through the third line of defense, which is the adaptive immune response. In this part three, we'll cover two things, the development of T and B lymphocytes, and then we'll discuss briefly about antigen presentation. If you recall from our episode on cells of the immune system, all our leukocytes have the same ancestor, the pluripotent stem cell. That cell can differentiate into lymphoid stem cells and that lymphoid stem cells can then differentiate into T cells and B cells. So these two, the T cells and B cells, we call them lymphocytes, and they are crucial for our adaptive immune system. Both of them are developed as the lymphoid stem cells in our bone marrow. After that, the stem cells split or differentiate into two types. One goes to the thymus, the other goes to the bone marrow. You can conceptualize this analogically like they were alien children on an alien planet. So on this planet, when the children are small, they are sent to two different primary schools, the T schools and B schools. So they go to these primary schools, meaning primary organs, to undergo initial maturation. So their initial maturation happens in primary lymphoid organs. T cells mature in thymus and B cells mature in bone marrow. Later, they will be sent to secondary schools. When the cells developed into T and B cells, they will go to secondary lymphoid organs, such as lymph nodes. As part of their early maturation, these cells develop surface receptors. They use these receptors for communication and enemy recognition. So number one, they use these receptors to bind to receptors on other cells. Number two, they bind to antigens. And number three, they transmit and receive messages. So do you remember what kind of messages? What kind of, uh, what's the form of signaling? It's called the cytokines. Now, there are three types of common receptors. First is the antigen-specific receptors. The second is cluster of differentiation. We abbreviate them as CD. And the third is called the major histocompatibility complex, MHC. So antigens are any substances that our immune receptors can bind to. They are the faces of the enemy, the, the faces that our T cells and B cells are recognizing. And our T cells and B cells recognize them through the antigen-specific receptors. So on T cells, we call them T cell receptors or TCR. On B cells, we can call them B cell receptors or we can, ca we can call them immunoglobulins or Ig. So they have a massive diversity in terms of shapes. Each shape of the receptor will bind to the specific shape of the antigen. On the surface of a T cell, you have your antigen specific receptor called T cell receptor. At, at the tip of the T cell receptor, there you have antigen binding site. So this is where antigens will stick to. Usually in proximity to this T cell receptor, you're gonna find CD receptors, the cluster of differentiation. And you often find them named using numbers, for example, CD3, CD4, CD8. There are hundreds of them that we have identified so far. So why are the CD molecules important? Well, um, a bunch of reasons. They can be identifiers for cells or immune cell markers. So, so as, as, a, as an immunologist in the lab, you will know which cells you are dealing with. So that's number one. Um, they can also be critical co-receptors, which means they support the antigen recognition. So if you have CD4, you bind to MHC molecules class 2. And if you have CD8, you bind to class 1. It's a bit like the two-step authentication for our digital, digital accounts. 
So sometimes you sign in to your digital account and you, you key in your password correctly, but you still can't get in. You need a second authentication. The website asks you uh, to give the code that they send to your phone. And after you put in the code, only then you can get full activation. So the CD molecules can be like that code to your phone. Sometimes your T cell receptor binds to the antigen, but it can't activate the recognition alone. You need a second authentication. So when you have the T cell receptor binding and, and the CD molecules binding at the same time, only then you can get full activation. On B cell surface, your antigen specific receptor is called B cell receptor. And usually adjacent to it, you have your MHC marker, usually class two. MHCs have three distinct classes, which can be found in different types of cells. So you can find class one on all nucleated cells, all cells that have nucleus. You can find class two on what's called professional antigen presenting cells, which we'll learn in a minute. For now, just think of B cells. So B cells have class two MHC. And then you have class three, which can be found on, on proteins associated with the complement system that we learned in the last episode. All right, so you remember a few minutes ago, I talked about how antigen specific receptors have diverse shapes. So a group of T cells or B cells, when that group carries the same shape of receptors, we call them clones and they are identical to their own clone. If you have clone X and clone Y, all cells from clone X will carry the same X receptor, and all cells from clone Y will carry Y receptor. So that's the concept of clones in, in our context. Now, the other concept is clonal deletion. Clonal deletion is the elimination of T or B cells that recognize self-antigens. Self-antigens are antigens of your own body, your own self. So one of the problems that our body needs to solve is, if we have these diverse receptors that can recognize almost all variants of antigens, how can we be sure that some of those receptors would not recognize our own self-antigens and kill our own cells, right? So. Clonal deletion is the solution to that problem. During the T and B cell development, all the clones are tested against self antigens. Imagine you have clone X, clone Y, clone Z. All of them will be exposed to self antigens. So if clone X can't bind to self antigen, clone X will survive. Say clone Y also can't bind, so clone Y will survive. But then, Clone Z binds to one of the antigens of our, of our own cells. So in that scenario, the whole members of Clone Z will be eliminated. They'll die. So this clonal deletion is part of the maturation in the primary uh, lymphoid organs, which is thymus for T cells and bone marrow for B cells. And clonal deletion leads to the phenomenon called immunotolerance. So our immune cells, once they mature, they will tolerate our own antigens. They will not attack our own cells. So this is so vital for health. Uh, so when you hear patients suffering from autoimmune diseases, it means this immunotolerance is somehow compromised. So it's when the army of the immune system starts attacking their own citizens. All right, we've talked about lymphocyte development. Now let's talk about antigen presentation. So first thing, in the literature, you can find both the terms antigens and immunogens. And in many contexts, they are interchangeable. However, you might read papers where the technical distinction between the two becomes important. So technically speaking, antigens are substances that bind to T cell receptors or B cell receptors, like antibodies. Immunogens, on the other hand, are antigens that activate immune responses. So all immunogens are antigens, but not all antigens are immunogens. On the surface of your antigen, 
there are sites called epitopes. Epitopes are the exact location where antibodies or other receptors will bind to. On microorganisms, you can have multiple forms of antigens. So antigens can be in the form of bacterial cell wall protein or cell wall polysaccharides or flagella proteins. So basically anything that can bind to T and B cell receptors, we can consider them antigens. Okay, for our immune cells, antigens are one of the most important factors uh, for target recognition. That's how our soldiers ID the enemy. Now, that recognition is not binary. It's not just, yes, I absolutely sure this is a pathogen versus no, I absolutely sure this is not a pathogen. It's not like that. Instead, the recognition has degrees. So sometimes they are very sure, sometimes they are not so sure. So these degrees of recognition is called antigenicity. There are at least three factors which affect antigenicity. First is the size. The larger the antigen, the easier it is to see. Number two is complexity. If the antigen is mixed of different protein monomers, for example, it is more likely to be a good antigen, to have high antigenicity. If it's just a strand of the same monomers, or if it is a simple macromolecule, then it is less likely to be recognizable as an antigen. The third factor is foreignness. The more foreign the target looks like, compared to friendly biomolecules, compared to our own self-antigen, the easier it is to recognize the target and the better it is as an antigen. All right, now we know about T and B cells. We know, about, we know that they have surface receptors. We know those receptors recognize antigens. But how do they get to see the antigens? The answer is, the antigens are presented to them. And there are a group of cells who do these presentations as a full-time job. We call them professional antigen presenting cells or professional APC. One quick way to identify professional APCs is that they possess MHC class 2. So examples of them include macrophages, dendritic cells and B cells. Now in the last episode, we learned about phagocytosis. So if you haven't understood or memorized it yet, go back there. I'll leave a link in the description later. So after the degradation by the phagolysosomes, some fragments of killed pathogens will be excreted away. However, some other fragments are kept by the phagocytes. What do the phagocytes do with those fragments? They actually bring the fragments to the cell surface and display the fragments as antigens. So <laughs> that's actually pretty horrific if you anthropomorphize this whole thing. Because you see, from the perspective of the microorganisms, what you have here is a monster that eat you, that break your arms and legs apart and, and display parts of your body on their surface. What happens next is the phagocytes, which is now an APC, will bring the antigen and present it to T cells and B cells. The antigen will be presented on MHC molecules class 2. And when presented to T cell, the antigen will bind to TCR or T cell receptor. And as I mentioned earlier, even if TCR recognizes the antigen, you need co-receptors binding at the same time. This will act as sort of verification protocol. Because you see, activating T cells for combat is a big deal. It's energetically expensive and it is deadly. So that's one of the reasons why you want to have those co-receptor activation. An example scenario is the APC brings the antigen to a T helper cell. Uh, basically, APC is reporting to the TH cell that, Sir, I detected this pathogen in our lymphatic vessels. And, and here's how the antigen looks like. So I recommend you activate and, and wake up the army. <laughs> 
when the TH cell sees the, the antigen, it's not just going to go, okay, let's work out the army. The, instead, the TH cell will run through multiple verification first. So he will use the TCR to bind to the antigen. He uses his CD4 to bind to the MHC class 2. He checked whether his CD28 can bind to CD80 on the APC and with whether the APC can send appropriate cytokines like interleukin-1. And after all of this, after everything checks out, then this T cell will say, oh, I have verified I have verified your report. I'm going to wake up the army. Let's go to war. All right, in the case of B cells, the APC will present the antigen to the cell surface immunoglobulins, or Ig. Uh, this Ig have many classes. All classes of Ig have the same basic structure. They have heavy chains and light chains. They have FC stem region on the heavy chain. At the upper tip of it, they have variable regions where they have the epitopes. And the epitopes are where the antigens will bind to. So you can go to table 18.4 in our reference book and, and study the differences among the five classes of immunoglobulins. It's all there. So that's it. Um, in the next episode, we're going to look at what happens after a successful antigen presentation and we'll also look at the two strategies that our adaptive immunity uses to neutralize pathogens. Alright, talk to you again. Barakallahu wa alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.